Let's talk about NetGalley. NetGalley is an online platform that connects publishers, authors and reviewers to promote and provide advanced access to new books before their official release. Publishers upload digital copies of upcoming books known as advanced reader copies or ARCs to the site. Reviewers, librarians, booksellers, educators and others like myself, a content creator, can request access to these ARCs in exchange for honest reviews, which generate buzz and early feedback for a book. In this video, I want to look at the pros and cons of NetGalley and my own experience with it. If you're interested in NetGalley, uh, Lisa of Troy made a great video about how you access NetGalley and I'll leave a link in the show notes below to her video. My name is Jim, this is my channel Books, Reading and Stuff. First I'll look at the pros of NetGalley. What are the positives with being on NetGalley, using NetGalley? First, there's the early access. You get to read books before they're officially released, which can be exciting for avid readers and book reviewers. It's having a look behind the curtain before the book comes out, as it were. Secondly, there's a diverse selection of books, a wide range of genres and titles, including fiction and non-fiction, graphic novels, children's books, and now audio books as well, to discover new authors and new stories. Third, there's the convenience. The platform is easy to use and books are available in digital formats like Kindle or EPUB, making them accessible on various devices. I use NetGalley, the NetGalley app on my phone for the ARCs. Just leave that there. You can see a lot of these are expired, but this is the one I'm reading at the moment. One more lie. The final pro is the influence. Writing reviews helps you become a more active participant in this book world potentially influencing other readers and contributing to the book's visibility and success. Those are the pros and for a balanced discussion we need to look at some of the cons as well. The approval process. Not all requests are approved, especially for high profile popular books and this can be frustrating. Publishers often consider your profile and your viewing history. I've had 14 requests declined. I've had 40 accepted. I've read 40 books or 39 and a half books on NetGalley so far, uh, but 14 were declined. Uh, I wasn't approved the teacher by Frieda McFadden, although I've been approved by other books of Frieda McFadden's. I wasn't approved of the Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. Both of these books I purchased later. Secondly, there's the pressure to review. Once you've received an ARC, there's an expectation to provide a review. You don't have to do this, but this is what's expected. You get free access to the book. In return, you leave a review. This can feel like a commitment, especially if you have a long reading list. I will only request one or two ARCs at a time because I don't want to be burdened with a slew of ARCs all coming in at once. Thirdly, it's e-format only or audiobook only. For those who prefer physical books, it's nice to have a physical book. It's something to hold up and it's got the smell of a physical book. The all digital format might not be so appealing. I've, since the pandemic, I've become used to reading e-books and I find it convenient just to carry my phone around with me so I've got books with me at all times either on Kindle or on the NetGalley app. And finally, there may be technical issues. I haven't found that with NetGalley, but sometimes I've had trouble downloading books with, from Book Sirens. If you like discovering uh, books early and enjoy writing reviews, NetGalley can be a rewarding platform, but it does come with some responsibilities and some limitations. I've picked up some great reads from NetGalley and discovered some great new authors to me. I've read Irina Shapiro's Tate and Bell series, which I really enjoyed. Also, when I wanted to try a contemporary romance, I looked at Not In My Book by Katie Holt, and I really liked that. 
And there have been many thrillers as well, like The Institution by Ellen Fields is a really good thriller, and The Co-worker by Frieda McFadden, which has been... My review of that on YouTube has over a thousand views now, which I'm very pleased with. Some of the arcs have been a little disappointing, uh, but I've yet to DNF any arc. Knights of Plague by Oren Pamuk was quite a tome, it was about 700 pages, and it was very dry. It was written more like a history textbook than a novel to keep the pages turning. But on the whole, I've enjoyed my experience of NetGalley. After I finish a book on NetGalley, I will leave reviews for it on Goodreads, on Amazon, on my own blog. And of course here on YouTube, I'll put out a one minute review of the book. And I'll leave a review directly on NetGalley. So those are my views on NetGalley, the pros, the cons and my own experience. I'd like to hear your experience. If you use NetGalley, please comment below or any questions, please put them below. I started NetGalley back in May 2021 when I borrowed The Watcher Girl by Minka Kent. And since then, I've been averaging about one NetGalley arc every month. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. This will help me with the YouTube algorithm and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.